بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بشكر حضرتك على التقديم الجميل يا دكتور فكري يعني كتير قوي ونفس المعزه والله ربنا يعلم يعني الغربيه يعني ليها معزه خاصه والرابطه طبعا بشكر دكتور عمرو على الدعوه وطبعا مبسوطه جدا ان اكون وسط نخبه متميزه من الاساتذه المتميزين في تخصصاتهم وزي ما دكتور فكري قال احنا هنقدم الشورت ستاتشر من كل البرسبكتيفز بتاعته يا رب ان شاء الله تبقى حاجه جميله وتعجب حضراتكم وطبعا مبسوطه جدا بوجودي مع حضراتكم واتمنى زي ما الدكتور فكري قال نتقابل بقى فيزيكال ان شاء الله ونخلص من الكوفيد 19 ان شاء الله. هتكلم عن الشورت ستاتشر وهحاول اجاوب على الاسئله الدكتور فكري تفضل وقالها اند ليت مي اوبن ذا سين باي ا فيري كومن اند بوبيلر كويستشن اسك باي بيشنتس تو اس از بيدياتريشنز ان اور كلينكس am i short or not and you can clearly uh, see the bell curve where most of the children lie in the middle part of the bell curve extremely short and extremely tall children are on both sides of the bell chart and this is how the bell curve appears statistically you can see here 95% of the children lie between minus 2 and plus 2 standard deviation above plus 2 these are the tall children and below minus 2 these are the short children and this is how it appears and from him here came the growth charts and you can see here minus 2 to plus 2 standard deviation is the normal range for height and from here came the definition and the classification of short stature, which is my first item. The short stature definitions height below minus two standard deviation or third percentile for age and sex, according to which type of growth chart you are using, height more than two standard deviation below mid parental height, growth velocity below minus 2 or 25th percentile on the growth velocity chart over 6 to 12 months, height deceleration across two major percentile lines on the growth chart. And as we all know, a lot of factors affect growth, namely intrinsic and extrinsic factors. The intrinsic factors include genetic and hormonal factors, and the extrinsic factors include nutrition on top of the list, exercise and socioeconomic factors and what really happens is that they work together to achieve growth of children and adolescents in life and this is the proposed classification of short stature by european society for pediatric endocrinology short stature is classified into either normal variants or pathological causes. The normal variants include familial short stature and constitutional delay in growth and puberty, and this will be discussed by Professor Ashraf. Pathological causes include either primary growth failure, secondary growth failure, or idiopathic short stature. The primary growth failure includes infants born small for gestational age, discussed by Professor Ashraf as well, skeletal dysplasias, syndromes like Turner, Noonan and Pradovili syndrome. Secondary growth failure includes chronic systemic illness, chronic undernutrition that will be discussed by Professor Jehan, endocrine causes that I'm going to focus on like growth hormone disorders, hypothyroidism, Cushing, metabolic disorders, psychosocial dwarfism and its impact, and this will be discussed by Professor al -Aruha. and finally drugs like steroids and chemotherapy. So this is the main classification for short stature. And please remember that normal variants are much more common while pathological causes are less common. So it's very important to exclude normal variants before jumping to the diagnosis of pathological causes. And the question when speaking about growth, is it only growth hormone? The answer is no. A lot of hormones affect growth in different periods of life. In the intrauterine period, we have insulin growth factors, and this is not growth hormone mediated. And please remember that during intrauterine period, growth hormone has no role in utero. And then we have the insulin. In infancy, proper nutrition and normal thyroid functions is very important. In childhood, here comes the role of growth hormone, insulin growth factors, and this is growth hormone mediated. 
thyroid hormones, and insulin has got the least role. And finally, in adolescence, there is synergistic effect of sex steroids and growth hormone working together to achieve the growth spurt. So as you see here, different hormones affect growth in different periods of life, while the main role of growth hormone is in childhood and adolescence. My second question or item is diagnosis and management of growth hormone deficiency, which is one of the most important causes of short stature in children. Indeed, growth hormone is needed throughout life, as you see. And there is a pulsatile secretion of growth hormone starting at midnight and 4 a.m. during sleep. And if we look at the growth hormone IGF axis, the hypothalamus, of course, secretes growth hormone releasing hormone, which stimulates antipituitary to produce growth hormone, while somatostatin inhibits growth hormone secretion to avoid over secretion of growth hormone. And then the growth hormone acts on the liver to stimulate insulin growth factor one. Growth hormone exerts a negative feedback on its own secretion at the level of antipituitary and hypothalamus. And IGF-1 does the same at the level of pituitary and hypothalamus and exerts a positive feedback on somatostatin to avoid excess growth hormone secretion. So it's very logical to hypothesize that pathophysiology of growth hormone deficiency is due to de facto at the level of hypothalamus and to pituitary or the liver. Of course, growth hormone promotes growth either directly by acting on the growth plate or through insulin growth factor one secretion from the liver, which also acts on the growth plate stimulating growth. And the effects of growth hormone deficiency differ in different age groups. In childhood and puberty, it's important for linear growth. And here, higher growth hormone doses are needed. In adults, it's needed for metabolic purpose, like being lipolytic, increasing the bone growth and bone mineral density, increasing the muscle mass. And metabolic effects require lower growth hormone doses and lies in between transitional period between childhood and adulthood. And these are the diagnostic criteria of growth hormone deficiency proposed by Growth Hormone Research Society. You can see here height more than 2.25 standard deviation below the mean for age and sex, height more than two standard deviation below mid-parental height. The child has got proportionate short stature. The growth velocity is below 25th percentile over six to 12 months. The bone age is delayed low IGF-1 and IGF binding protein, three, low growth hormone by two growth hormone stimulation test. And you can clearly see the typical features of growth hormone deficiency. The doll-like features like frontal bossing, depressed nasal bridge, small mandible, childish appearance because growth hormone is important for development of the facial bones. They also have high-pitched voice, sparse hair, small hands and feet, and you can clearly see abdominal fat because there is excess lipogenesis due to lack of the lipolytic effect of growth hormone. And this is a typical chart of a child with growth hormone deficiency, born normal at birth, and then during infancy growing, and the problem starts to appear at the age of three years, plateauing height. And when growth hormone is given early, you can see beautiful response as regards the growth here in the chart. What about the neonates? Hypoglycemia is a very important clue. So please consider the diagnosis of growth hormone deficiency among the list of causes of neonatal hypoglycemia. Prolonged neonatal jaundice, micropenis, history of traumatic delivery, cranial irradiation, head trauma, consanguinity, midline facial abnormalities as well. It's very important to exclude the following before jumping to diagnosis of growth hormone deficiency, because this list is more common than growth hormone deficiency. Hypothyroidism, chronic illness, undernutrition, genetic syndromes, and small for gestational age. And the growth hormone dose differs according to different age groups. In children, the treating dose is 0.025 to 0.035 milligram per kg per day. In transitional period, 0.2 to 0.5 milligrams a day. In adult, 0.1 to 0.3 milligram per day. And these are the tips for optimizing the final outcome in children on growth hormone therapy.
Start growth hormone therapy as early as possible once the diagnosis is established. Daily subcutaneous injection at bedtime. Larger doses are needed at puberty. Doses differ according to various indications. Larger doses are needed for Turner, Noonan, SGA, and idiopathic short stature. And of course, compliance is very important. Growth hormone, daily subcutaneous injections. The coming item are the features of short stature associating chronic illness. Of course, any chronic illness can cause short stature. And here you can see a long list of chronic illness. Name any chronic illness, it will affect the height. And in such a case, there is short stature and underweight. And this is a very important point to differentiate this from endocrinal short stature. The endocrinal short stature, the child is short with obesity or short with normal weight, while the child with chronic illness is usually short and underweight. And this is a very important clue. The main cornerstone of treatment here is to treat the cause. And if you treat the cause and the child is not growing well, here you can try growth hormone like in chronic kidney disease, which is an FDA approved indication as well. Let me shed the light on a very important disease, which is sometimes missed. And this is the celiac disease, which impairs the growth. And short stature could be the only presenting symptom in celiac disease. And this is what we call silent celiac disease, which makes the diagnosis more challenging. And please don't wait for the picture here that you can see. A very emaciated child with bloating, chronic diarrhea, distension, having severe anemia. Don't wait for this picture. Please screen for celiac disease in any short child and put the child on a gluten-free diet if proved positive. And this is a chart for a child with celiac disease, normal at birth, and the deceleration coincides with introduction of food. Here you can see deceleration in the height. What about the weight? Failure to gain weight coincidence with introducing the food followed by weight loss. So we are facing a child with short stature and weight loss. Think of chronic disease, think of celiac, and this is not endocrine. The treatment here is to put the child on a gluten-free diet. And the only indication of growth hormone therapy here is if you put the child on a gluten-free diet for 12 months and there is no catch-up growth, we start growth hormone therapy. And then we have the workup of a child with short stature. The workup starts by clinical assessment, verify the exact age, exclude infants born small for gestational age, chronic illness, drugs, school performance, especially syndromic short stature and hypothyroidism, psychological status for psychosocial dwarfism, nutritional status for nutritional dwarfism, family history to exclude genetic short stature and constitutional delay in growth and puberty. And then we do anthropometric assessment by measuring weight, height, BMI, upper to lower segment ratio and calculate the midparental height. Don't forget to do pubertal assessment if the child is above the age of 10. For investigations, we start by baseline investigations, CBC, ESR, liver, kidney functions, calcium, phosphorus, alkaline phosphatase, celiac screening, karyotype for all short girls. If all of these are normal, we go to endocrine assessment. Do thyroid function, two growth hormone stimulation test, IGF-1, cortisol, and ACTH, and then the bone age, and sometimes CT, MRI, cell toxica. And it's very important when dealing with cases of short stature to watch your step to avoid the pitfalls. Avoid basal growth hormone measurement, two growth hormone stimulation test, thyroid function should be done first, carry type for all short girls. Bone age does not indicate a definite diagnosis, but it excludes endocrine disease. MRI cell toxica if you have more than one pituitary hormone defect and exclude normal variants, nutritional, chronic illness before jumping to endocrine disease. My final point is obesity and short stature, how to think in that case. Pediatric and adolescent obesity is classified into either simple obesity, endocrine or syndromic. Of course, simple obesity is the most common and you should exclude comorbidities in such a case. Endocrine obesity includes hypothyroidism, Cushing, growth hormone deficiency, 
pseudo hypoparathyroidism and hypothalamic dysfunction. In syndromic obesity, exclude Lawrence Mombedal and Pradivili syndrome. For the simple obesity, the child is obese, tall with normal IQ. For endocrine, obese, short with normal IQ. While in syndromic, the child is obese, short, usually below average IQ, and you can find some characteristic features. And here is the chart for endocrine obesity. Here you can see plateauing of the height and gaining weight. Obesity and short stature exclude endocrine disease. You start by clinical evaluation, do thyroid function, calcium profile, Cushing, sometimes genetic testing, investigate for complications, and sometimes we need a team of genetics, hepatology, and bariatric surgery. And finally, the treatment is according to the cause in addition to treatment of complication. A very fast comment on Prader-Willi syndrome, where infants are born with hypotonia, floppy infant, SGA, feeding difficulty, hyperphagia starts in childhood, where parents describe that the child cannot stop eating. They close the refrigerator for the child to stop eating. They also have almond eyes, obesity, short stature, and hypogonadism. In the Lawrence Mombedal, the most characteristic is the polydactyly and retinitis, pigmentosa, in addition to obesity and short stature. So don't forget to do fundus examination and look at the fingers in cases of obesity with dysmorphic features. And this is my last slide. I hope I was able to cover all. I like always to put this slide in all talks of short stature because I really believe in that. Better growth changes the future. Thank you very much for your attention.